How are you all this morning? Are you okay? Have you had a good evening, a good morning, I wonder? Oh, I have been up since six o'clock this morning. Actually, 5.45 I've been up since because I went to... Oh, I went to Tesco's to get my shopping, well, my parents shopping for them. Um, and there was already a queue outside at six in the morning, can you believe? So if I look a little bit like this, like I need matchsticks to keep my eyes open, then I apologize. Um, but what can you do? What can you do? You gotta do these things. Maybe pop in the comments box what you've been up to. I do like hearing what people have had for breakfast. I had an apple and a protein bar. It was okay. And two coffees. What have you had for breakfast? Something nice? Oh, another person's been to Tesco, have they, at 6 a.m.? <sighs> The problem is you've got options of either going before work or after work. So there's not much you can do really, is there? Um, but there you go. Oh, you had eggs. Hello, Isabella. Hello, Jemima. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> I don't know what I ate for breakfast. Jasper had wheat bix toast. Lovely, very nice. I do like some wheat bix Bresen for breakfast. I don't know what that is, Emma. Bresen. Mm. Not sure. Toast, cornflakes, lots of coffee. <laughs> so, just a reminder before we get started, um about our wonderful poetry competition um we had loads in yesterday my email was pinging every 15 or 20 minutes with people sending in um poems for neil zetter's competition now if you remember neil zetter is giving a signed dedicated copy of his brand new book gorilla ballerina a book of bonkers animal poems to the winner of our poetry competition. And it was um, an imaginary animal that you had to write a poem about. And we have had some really, really good um, designs and creations coming through that have really made us laugh. Um, and it's gonna be really difficult. But just remember, if you still want to send your poem in, you've still got time. You've still got time, but it finishes today at six o'clock, okay? Um, so you have to have your email sent in by six o'clock. Um, and what I thought I'd do, I'd read some out tomorrow and then maybe even next week, because we've got so many coming in um, that I thought it would be nice if we read them out, some of them next week as well. Um, but so lovely. There, there are some rhyming poems, there are some acrostic poems, there are shape poems. Um, some of them are written on paper, some of them are typed up. It doesn't matter at all. Um, however you want to send it in, and you can send that in to me at ian at the reading realm .co .uk. Okay? Super. So, we've got lots in store for us today lots in store for us. Sorry, I keep going up and down. I've got one of those bar stools where you can change the height of it. Um, so what have we got? We're going to go over some of the sign language that we learned yesterday. And then we've got an ancient Greek myth, which is one of my favourite ancient Greek myths. Um, and it's perfect for this time of year because it's a myth about someone called Persephone. Um, and the changing seasons. So it's a really lovely myth. And then I'm gonna show you um, a quick art activity at the end um, that links really nicely to this story and involves creating a paper 3D flower. Um, 
because flowers are quite important and springtime and the growth of flowers is very important in the myth of Persephone. Okay, you might have heard of it before. Um, if you've done ancient Greek at school, maybe, sometimes you do it in year three and four, um, ancient Greeks and myths and things. Um, and very often we get children to design their own mythical creature and write a quest story or an adventure story about a hero defeating this sort of mythical monster. Um, so you might know, um, children, some myths um, from ancient Greece. Maybe you could write one down for me in the comments box. You not, might know the one about the strange creature with the snakes that turns people to stone. Yes, and you might know other ones as well. Um, so that's the outline for today. Reviewing some of that sign language and the poetry that we've learned over the last few weeks. A Greek myth and then an art activity, a little bit like Blue Peter, but not as organised or as good. <laughs> OK, then. Right. Are you all standing up? Are you all ready? Are you all feeling limber? Um, do a little dance. You know, you can't see it, but I'm actually doing that um, floss thing here. Um, Basically, when I taught in year two the other year, um, that was the craze doing the floss and children would just stand up in the middle of the class and do this. And I'd say, could you please sit down? Thank you very much. Um, but they tried teaching it to me and I could not get it. I could not understand how to do this floss thing. Um, sorry, I'm off on a tangent now. Um, and it's taken me almost two years to learn how to do it. It wasn't until about five months ago when someone at the gym was standing there doing this. And I said, oh, I can't do that. My year two children taught me how to do that. And I just couldn't do it. Um, and he taught me. And eventually I learned how to do it. So maybe you want to warm up by doing a little floss. Or maybe that's really like past it now and old. And you don't do that sort of thing anymore. OK. So let's crack on with some sign language, shall we? We'll start off with our days of the week, which we've been learning this week. And then we're going to have a look at that poem that we looked at last week, What is Pink by Christina Rossetti, because we learned how to sign all the different colours, didn't we? So let's see. Let's just see. Let's do a little warm up, see if you can remember. I'm going to call out some days of the week and you're going to see if you can remember the sign to it. OK, are you ready? Adults, are you all standing up? Children, if they're not, nudge them. Okay, are you ready then? Sunday. It was Sunday. Well done if you got it. Friday. Friday. Did you get it correct? Next one. Um, Monday. That's it. Well done if you got it. Let's think about another one. Um, Wednesday. Go. Wednesday. Well done. Thursday. Tuesday. Saturday. Well done. How much did you remember? Let's go through the whole thing now from the beginning to the end of those signs for the days of the week. So we've got Monday, Tuesday. Are you joining in? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Well done. Let's see if we can do it backwards. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Okay, let's do it backwards then. Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday. Yes, well done. Give yourself a round of applause if you get that right. We do have a little visitor, so I'll just go and get him. He wants to come and say hello quickly before he runs off with his tennis ball. 
let's go and say hello to everyone then, shall we, Oscar? Come on. Good boy. Here he is. Say hello, Oscar. Yeah, Oscar is fine this morning. Um, his ear is a little bit better. Um, and he's been playing with a tennis ball and he's been out for a nice 40-minute walk, haven't you, mate? So he's fine this morning. Hope you're all okay too. I'll let him go because he doesn't like sitting still for too long. Oh, yep, he's off. <laughs> okay. So let's have a look at that poem, shall we? See how much of it you can remember. Um, we looked at the colours of the week. The colours, the colours last week. Um, and we looked at a poem called What is Pink by Christina Rett Rossetti. So shall we see what you can remember from it? See how much you can remember and join in with me, okay? After three. One, two, three. What is pink? A rose is pink by the fountain's brink. What is red? A poppy is red in its barley bed. What is blue? The sky is blue where the clouds float through. What is white? A swan is white sailing in the light. What is yellow or yellow? A pears are yellow, rich and ripe and mellow. What is green? The grass is green with small flowers in between. What is Violet, clouds of violet in the summer twilight. What is orange? Why an orange? Just an orange. How much did you remember of all the colours? They're quite tricky, aren't they? So did you remember pink, red, yellow, white, green, orange? purple. Another couple of favourites of mine that I'll teach you very quickly for colours are gold. So gold is a G. So you go gold, gold. So it's like it's sparkling gold. And similarly, silver is your two little fingers. Silver, silver. Okay, so should we do gold? Gold, gold, silver. Okay. So that's two more colours you can add to your repertoire there. Gold and silver. Okay, so are you ready? Shall we have a look at our ancient Greek myth for today? It's called Persephone and it's about, it explains the seasons really. Um, and it's about Persephone and her mother Demeter. And Persephone is kidnapped by the god of the underworld. Does anyone know who the god of the underworld is in Greek mythology? Can you remember? You might have seen the film Hercules, the Disney film, or you might have heard of him. So the god of the underworld plays an important part in this. If you can remember, maybe type your comments out for me. Who was the god of the underworld in ancient Greek mythology? Mm, tricky one. That's it. Well done, Hades. Hades was the god of the underworld. Okay, here we go then. So this is um, a story about Persephone. Okay. You can snuggle up under a blanket if you want to or sit down comfortably and just listen to the story. It's not too long. Here we go. Demeter had the care of all the plants, fruits and grains in the world. She taught the people how to plough the fields and plant the seeds. She helped them gather in their harvests. They loved the kind earth mother and gladly obeyed her. They also loved her daughter, the beautiful Persephone. Persephone wandered all day in the meadows among the flowers, 
Wherever she went, the birds singing merrily flocked after her. The people said, where Persephone is, there is the warm sunshine. Flowers bloom when she smiles. Listen to her voice. It is like a bird's song. Demeter wished always to have her child near her. But one day, Persephone went alone into a meadow near the sea. She had made a wreath for her hair and gathered all the flowers that her apron could hold. Far across the meadow, she saw a white flower gleaming. She ran to it and found that it was a narcissus, but far more beautiful than any she had ever seen. On a single stem were a hundred blossoms. She tried to pick it, but the stem would not break. With all her strength, she grasped it and it slowly came up by the roots. However, it left a great opening in the earth, which grew larger and larger and larger. Persephone, oh, you can all, you can all um, tap on something or do a drum roll, maybe. Persephone heard a rumbling thunder under her feet. Then she saw four black horses coming toward her from the opening. Behind them was a chariot made of gold and precious stones. And in it sat a dark, stern man. It was Hades. Can you show someone next to you what stern looks like? If someone looks very stern, how might they look? Very stern, very serious faced, maybe angry. So in it, in this chariot of precious stones and gold, sat a dark, stern man. It was Hades. He had come up from his land of darkness and was shading his eyes with his hands. He saw Persephone, beautiful with flowers, and instantly caught her in his arms and placed her in the chariot beside him. The flowers fell from her apron. Oh, my pretty flowers, she cried. I have lost them all. Then she saw the stern face of Hades. Frightened, she stretched out her hands to kind Apollo, who was driving his chariot over her head. She called to her mother for help. But Hades drove straight back down toward his dark underground under home. The horses seemed to fly. As they left the light, Hades tried to comfort Persephone. He told her of the wonders of his kingdom. He had gold and silver and all kinds of precious stones. Persephone saw gems glittering on every side as they went along, but she did not care for any of them. Hades told her how lonely he was and that he wished her to be his queen and share all his riches. Persephone did not want to be queen. She longed only for her mother and the bright sunshine. Soon they came to the land of Hades. Boo. It seemed very dark and dismal to Persephone and very cold too. A feast was ready for her, but she would not eat. I wonder what sort of feast they might have in the underworld. I wonder what food Hades might prepare for Persephone. What do you think? A feast was ready for her, but she would not eat because she knew that anyone who ate in Hades' home would never return to Earth ever again. She was very unhappy, though Hades tried in many ways to please her. Everything and everyone on the Earth was unhappy too. One by one, the flowers hung their heads and said, we cannot bloom, for Persephone has gone. The trees dropped their leaves and moaned, Persephone has gone, gone. The birds flew away and said, we cannot sing, for Persephone has gone. Demeter was more miserable than anyone else. She had heard Persephone call her and had gone straight home. 
She searched and searched and searched all the earth for her child. She asked everyone she met these questions. Have you, have you seen Persephone? Where, where is Persephone? The only answer she ever received was gone, gone. Persephone is gone. Demeter transformed and became a wrinkled old woman. No one would have known that she was the kind mother who had always smiled on the people. Nothing grew on the earth and all was dreary and barren. Demeter said that she would do nothing until Persephone returned to her. It was useless for the people to plough the soil. It was useless to plant the seeds. Nothing, nothing could grow without the help of Demeter. All the people were idle and sad. When Demeter found no one on earth who could tell her about Persephone, she looked up towards the sky. Who do you think she's going to see when she looks up towards the sky? Let's find out. She looked up towards the sky. There she saw Apollo in his bright, bright chariot. He was not driving as high in the sky as he used to do. Often he gathered dark mists above him so that none saw him for many days. Demeter knew that he must know about Persephone for he could see all things on earth and in the sky. Apollo told Demeter that Hades had carried Persephone away and that she was with him in his underground lair. Demeter hastened to the great father Zeus, who could do all things. She pleaded and asked him to send to Hades for her daughter. Zeus called Hermes. Do you know Hermes? Who was Hermes the god of? Hermes. You might have heard of that. Zeus called Hermes. He bade him go as swiftly as the wind to the home of Hades. Hermes whispered to everything on the way that he was going for Persephone so that all might be ready to welcome her back. He soon arrived in the kingdom and gave Hades the message from Zeus. He told him about the barren earth and of how Demeter was mourning for her child. He said she would not let anything grow until Persephone came back. The people would starve if she did not soon return. But Persephone wept bitterly for that very day. She had finally given in and eaten a pomegranate and swallowed six of its seeds. Hades pitied her and said that she only need stay with him for one month for each seed she had eaten. Joy filled her and gave her wings and as swiftly as Hermes himself, Persephone flew up into the sunshine. Apollo saw her and rose higher and higher into the sky. A gentle breeze came rustling from the southeast and whispered something to everything he met. Suddenly the flowers sprang up. The birds flocked together and sang. The trees put on their bright green leaves. Everything, great and small, began to say in their own language, Be happy for Persephone has come. Persephone has come. Demeter saw these changes and was puzzled. Can the earth be ungrateful? Does she so soon forget Persephone, she cried. It was not long, however, before her own face became beautiful and happy, for she held again her beloved child in her arms. When Demeter found that Persephone could stay with her for only half of the year, she brought out the choicest treasures from her storehouse, and while Persephone stayed, the world was full of beauty and joy and colour. When she had gone, Demeter covered the rivers and lakes and spread a soft white blanket over the sleeping earth. Then she too fell asleep and dreamed such pleasant, wonderful dreams that she did not wake until she felt Persephone's warm kiss on her forehead. So that is the story of Persephone. And it tells really of, I suppose, the coming of su spring and summer and then the coming of autumn and winter. So the ancient Greeks believed that when Persephone returned from the underworld, flowers would spring up, the sunshine would shine, there'd be beauty and colour, so spring and summer, and that when she had to go back to the underworld, because remember, 
Hades only allowed her to go for six months. When she went back to the underworld, her mother covered the land in snow and a white blanket of snow and um, fell back to sleep dreaming and was waken, woken again when Persephone returned. So that's the idea about Persephone. And if you've been on any walks recently or looked out in your garden, you might see that some flowers are starting to spring up and it's starting to um, look rather beautiful everywhere with flowers blossoming and it might be a bit sunnier. Um, it's a little bit sunny here. Um, and that's, that's the story of Persephone um, and Demeter and Hades. He's always up to no good, isn't he, in these Greek myths? Um, so I thought it would be interesting. Oh, actually, let me go through some activities that you can do with that. Um, there's so many activities you could do with that book and Greek gods. Um, one activity that I particularly like doing when we start um, the ancient Greeks is to, um, you, could, you can probably find them online maybe, or you can make your own, um, is to make top trump cards um, of all the Greek gods. So you draw a picture of the Greek gods and then you do things like their power, their strength, um, that sort of thing, their weapons. Um, and you give them scores and then you can play a game against each other. So it involves some research, finding out about the different Greek gods and goddesses. And then you can assign scores to them and make up your own game of top trumps. So that's always a good one to do with um, Greek myths that you can do. Um, the other thing that's um, a good thing that you do, and I've put lots of pictures on the website. So on the Reading Realm website under day nine, because we're on day nine already, um, there are some art activities that you can do. Um, if, you've, um, if you've got like one of those ready orange um, sort of garden pots, like either plastic that look like that, you know, that you grow things in, what you can do with a marker, or a black pen is um, turn the pot into an ancient Greek pot and look up some patterns and things. Um, yours will be much better than this. Um, and you can look up some Greek designs and things and use just, you only need to use black because it's black against the orange pot. Um, and you could, can create a um, sort of pot like that. If you enjoy getting messy, what I have also done before is get a balloon um, and paper mache it. Um, it does take quite a long time to dry though. Um, you can paper mache it um, and then when it's hard you can add in some handles and um, a base to it and then you paint it orangey red and then again, you can do the same again with your designs on it and design your own um, Greek pot and things. Um, so that's quite a good one if you like doing that sort of thing. Um, and a really good film, if you fancy watching a film this afternoon. If you're younger, you might want to have a look at um, Disney's Hercules. That's a really good film. And if you're a bit older, um, Percy Jackson um, and The Lightning Thief um, is a good film as well. Um, so you could do that one. Um, so that's some ideas. Now I'm going to teach you something that my teacher taught me in year four. Um, and it's something that stood me in very good stead for art projects and making Mother's Day cards and Easter cards and things like that. Um, and it's how to make a really simple 3D daffodil. Um, there are lots of daffodils springing up at the moment and I thought that linked in really well with the story of Persephone. Um, and I will show you how to do it very carefully and quickly. Um, we're doing it live so it might go horrendously wrong. Um, so the first thing that you need is a stalk. Either cardboard, paper, um, how, however you want to do it. Okay. Um, cardboard's better 
because um, it's a bit stiffer and it will stand up better. Um, I didn't have any green card or paper, so I've just coloured in some white card with a green pen. I've got a little trusty box of pens and I just coloured it in. Okay. And then what you can do next, it does work better if you do them individually, is um, I'll show you very quickly, is draw out some petals. Um, and the reason that it's best to do them individually is that they have a slight curl on them if you do. Um, it just makes it look that bit nicer. And again, if you don't have any orange or yellow, you can just colour in your petals. Um, so there's my yellow. I will do this ever so quickly so you don't get bored. Um, what you could do as well is um, go outside and see if you can find any daffodils and have a look at them and have a look at the structure of them and what they look like. Um, don't pick any if they're not in your um, garden, obviously. Um, so what you do, ah, that was what I meant to do first. First things first, you need to make a little base for the flower. I should have done like a, here's one I made earlier sort of thing, but I didn't. So what are you going to do? Um, I would suggest using glue. Um, I'm just using sellotape um, so I can show you on the board. Okay. So you make a little base for your flower. And then what you do, you attach your petals onto it with glue, okay, and go all the way round with your petals. Um, I won't colour them all in and I won't do all of them, but I'll just show you the idea. Um, this is why they prepare these things earlier on TV so that you don't have to actually do it live in front of everyone while they're going, oh, hurry up. Um, but there we go. So you glue them on, give them a little curl if you can, um, like so. Um, lots of glue to stick them on. And do you see how they look better when they're um, single? If you did an outline of it, it just, it wouldn't look right at all. Um, and actually my, I think it was my year four teacher told us how to, taught us how to do this. Um, I don't know why, but it's something that I remember getting a lot of joy out of because the idea is, is that you can, whilst perhaps you can't get to the shop, you can make a cardboard bouquet of daffodils for your mums and dads, or your dads and dads, or your mums and your mums, whoever's at home. Um, this is a little bit odd. Um, you'll just have to bear with me. I won't start singing yet. We're not at that stage. Um, so there you go. There's your base of flowers like that, okay? So far, nice and easy. They're all going to be yellow or different shades of yellow. Okay. Um, now, the next thing that you need to do is make a cylinder. Okay. Now, I am going to do one very quickly whilst you're all watching and talking amongst yourselves. Um, I'm going to do colour in orange. Okay. You need a rectangular shape. Okay. A nice long rectangular shape like so. Okay. Orange paper, orange card. Um, and then what you do, you fold it and curl it into a cylinder like so. Okay, I remember being absolutely fascinated by this when I was little, thinking this was the best thing anyone had ever shown me in my entire life. Um, again, use glue if I were you. I'm just using sellotape um, so it can, so it makes sure it, it sticks. Okay, and then what you need to do, you're making the trumpet of your daffodil. Okay, at the end, you're gonna have small snips all around. Okay, and that is going to be stuck 
like so. Okay, and then at the other end, you can do some longer snips. Is this still as good as I remember it? I think it is. You can do some longer snips. Now, obviously, if your cardboard is orange, make sure you paint or colour in the end of it. Um, and then what you do, you get some glue and you pop your glue on the end there. And then you place it round like so. You glue it all down like so. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Um, like that. This will be orange at the end, hopefully. And you've got a little 3D daffodil. Okay. And what can you see that? Should we grab this so you can have a look? So you can see closer? Maybe not. That's not such a good idea, Ian. You get the idea, kids. Okay. Got it? See it? Yeah, and they look really impressive when you've actually coloured it in properly. Um, and what you can do if your cardboard is strong enough, um, you can actually put them in a vase and make a bouquet, like a bunch, a bouquet of 3D daffodils. And you could do orange petals and a yellow trumpet, um, yellow petals and an orange trumpet, you know, different colours play around with it, but they look really, really lovely. Um, okay. Um, I feel like I need a round of applause for that because that was like a quick fire run through of how to do a daffodil. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. Um, so that is Oscar's little challenge for today. Can you make a 3D daffodil and can you make a whole bouquet of them out of either coloured card, coloured paper. You could stick them onto some paper or make someone a Easter card maybe, but they do look really lovely when you've got some coloured paper um, or when you've painted them and coloured them in properly. Just make sure you colour in this end bit here, okay? Um, in fact, I'm going to do that now because it's really bothering me. Okay, so you would do it first and then colour that in. And then what you can also do is maybe add in some little lines there and so on. Yeah. And then that is your 3D lovely flower that links to the story of Persephone. There we go. That wasn't too bad, was it? Was it too bad? That was all right. Hopefully, I will get some lovely photos in the Reading Realm Facebook group of your beautiful daffodils um, to cheer us all up. Um, and maybe you can put them in a vase if you'll make one or something. Um, but that should be a nice activity to do. Um, as always, on the Reading Realm website, there's a home learning pack linked to um, the story of Persephone. Okay. Um, with activities, a word of the day, science activities, um, that sort of thing. So you could go and have a look at that if you want. Um, again, thank you everyone who's downloading the Reading Realm iPad app and who's leaving a review. That is really fantastic, really kind of you. Um, thank you very much for everyone. Um, who's been sharing the Facebook page and inviting people into the group. I really appreciate that. And as I said at the beginning this morning, um, make sure you get your poems in today, okay? Our second batch of poems went off to Neil's letter yesterday. So get them in quickly and make sure it's before six o'clock, okay? You can send them to me, remember? And Neil's already reading them all through. He's reading every single one of them. Um, so yeah, um, that was today. So we did some sign language days of the week. We heard a story, an ancient Greek myth about Persephone and the seasons. And then I modeled to you a delightful 3D daffodil. If there's anything you can do for me is post some photos in the group 
of you and your daffodils um, and really brighten up the page um, and the group, okay? Right, that is me off. I've been up since six, six o'clock getting shopping and things. I now need to go and do some more work. Um, I'll see you all later. I hope you have a lovely day. Um, maybe see if you can read some more ancient Greek myths. Um, poems by the end of the day and then we'll read out the winners tomorrow and then we've got our quiz tomorrow our book quiz um see you all later take care bye